Hello everybody. So now we're talking about learning how to improvise on the tune called So What. Okay. It's a modal tune. I think the first step you want to do is listen to the recording. Miles Davis, So What. And while you're at it, be listening to other people that did it. Uh, I have some favorites. Uh, there's a recording by the trombone player. Uh, Conrad Erwig, if I'm not mistaken, he's got a, a Latin jazz recording of So What that's just hot. And that's a nice one to listen to. But really, anything you can get your hands on that's that's got professional players, in the context of studying this stuff, please don't listen to amateurs, okay? Um, not that there's anything wrong with listening to amateurs. I do it all the time, Right? I'm not saying that, but if you're doing this to to get better at playing this tune, it's better to listen to the greats, okay? So yeah, don't don't be listening to the guy that just graduated from high school last year. You may think he sounds wonderful, and a lot of people may be raving about the guy, but I promise you he's not good as good as Tom Harrell. I promise you he's not as good as Wynton Marsalis. I promise you he's not as good as Freddie Hubbard. I mean, there's literally dozens of players you could listen to who are better than some dude that just graduated from high school. Okay? So, so yes, that's the first thing I want you to do is start listening to the, that tune. It's Miles Davis's So What? Now, you also want to master the keys of D major, that's two sharps, and E flat major, that's three flats. And I strongly recommend that you get your hands on my total tonalization book. Look for the, you can go to my website, eddielewis.com, and click on the menu item that says books, down there, Towards the bottom, I think, is a book called Total Tonalization Studies. And in preparation for learning so what, I recommend that you master the tonalization studies in D, master the tonalization studies in E flat. Okay? And, okay, so the next step is I want you to find some way to come up with a track either Band in a Box or iReal Pro, is that what it's called? Let me see. There's an iPhone app. Yeah, iReal Pro. I think you can program it and just put, instead of practicing the tune right away, just improvise on the E minor. Now the reason I'm saying D major over E minor is because this is a Dorian tune. Now, it doesn't have to be played in Dorian, but here's what I've been telling my students is you don't know who the judges are going to be. And if and, and the etude says Dorian etude. And if the judges hear that you're playing a C natural on that E minor chord, they, who knows how they're going to respond, right? There are judges out there that will say, oh, he's not playing Dorian. So then... Who knows, you could be playing like a wonderful solo, sometimes, you know, these guys get offended, you know, so don't take that chance. <laughs> if this was a performance, yes, do what sounds good to you, but for now, stick to the Dorian stuff, and um, yeah, so get, get iReal Pro or Band in a Box or something like that, and just practice over the E minor chord until that is masterful. And, and here's the thing, normally we would say avoid the tonic. The tonic in this key would be D, F sharp, A. But if you analyze Miles Davis' solo on this tune, he played D major, that's a D major chord, right? He used that as an extension over the top of the E minor. He did quite a bit of that. So... In this case, it's okay to play the D, F sharp, and the A. 
you know, I mean, emphasizing those, okay? And you'll hear that, if, now that I've said that, you'll notice that when you look at the solos and, and listen to what he's doing on that album, okay? And the same thing applies to the F minor. Practice the F minor by itself first before you practice the, with the track, okay? Um, so, what else am I doing here? Oh, the other thing is to make sure that after you get to that where you can, you, you've mastered D minor, uh, I'm sorry, E minor, you've mastered E, F minor separately, then start practicing with the track. And remember, we're not playing the chord we're playing the key. So while you're playing, and, and this is something that, that a lot of people don't understand the way I talk. Because, um, well let me tell you this. I don't teach the modes. There you go. That's another thing that I do that's different from the other guys. I don't teach modes. Uh, when, when there's a 2-5-1, I'm not thinking D Dorian over the first chord and G Mixolydian over the second chord and C Ionian over the third chord. I think that's really ridiculous. It's preposterous. It's horrible. Okay? Don't... Please, please, please don't think like that. Okay? It's C major. Now, in the case of this tune, where you have E minor for, I think it's 16 bars or 8 bars, I don't remember. Um, I think it's 16. Um, and the so what I talk about is what I call a technique pool. So all the stuff you do in D major Let's say you have, let's say you're playing um, what is, uh, rhythm changes in the key of C concert, that's our D major, right? A lot of the stuff that you play in, uh, over rhythm changes in D major fits over that E minor, that Dorian, that's being suspended for 16 bars. Okay, I call that a technique pool. All the technique you have in that key signature is accessible to you over any sequence of chords that are in that key. And it's up to you to use your ear to decide which one of those things you're going to use in any given context. Okay? So you're really improvising in the key of D, even though, and I say, D, so, and, and here's where some people might get kind of upset with me. The Dorian thing, I think they're cool with that. Um, they get upset with me, like, um, what's that tune? Uh, Black Orpheus, right? Black Orpheus is in the key of B minor. Right? Why don't I say improvise in B minor for Black Orpheus? Well, because the same technique pool that works in B minor is the same technique pool for D major. What your fingers do is the same. And you use your ear to find which notes work at different places in, in the harmony. Now remember, this is how I teach the beginners. I'm not saying this is the end result. In the end, we play harmonies. That's the end result. Is we want to we want to be we want to be able to master each and every chord that passes. But when you're a beginner, that's not how you sound good. And I would much rather have my students sound good right now. Okay. So we start off with the ingoing horizontal approach. And when you're playing an ingoing horizontal, then you just play the key. Okay? 
So on this tune, so what? You're playing D major. Not D major, the key. D major, the technique pool. Okay? You're playing D major over the E minor chord. And you play E flat major over the F minor chord. So the last thing I want to say about this is to, to get to where you feel comfortable with that, after you've done the steps I've already said, mastering E minor by itself, mastering F minor by itself, when you start practicing the track, you want to play it over and over and over again because your ear is going to help you. First of all, it's going to help you hear when the key changes. Okay? But it's also going to help you find what notes are the pretty notes and what notes... You know, if you want to... I've had students that accidentally, they didn't know what a pentatonic scale was, but because they found these notes that sounded pretty, they started favoring those notes using the system that I'm, use, that I'm teaching, right? They start favoring those notes. And they end up playing the pentatonic scale, the E minor pentatonic. How cool is that? It's like they in invented the, you know, that it's, it's possible to invent something someone already invented. Right? So they, they, they find those sweet notes. Now, let's talk one more thing before I shut this down. Um, what happens when you play notes that are not in the key? Easy answer. Nothing. <laughs> okay? If you play stuff that's not in the key, so what? Hey, that's the name of this tune, isn't it? Right? It doesn't matter. You know, I have this, this, I guess you could call it a slogan, a saying that I say when we're doing jazz improv in the lessons. I don't give you rules to follow. I give you prompts to inspire, to inspire creativity. This thing about playing in the key of D major over the E minor chord is just a prompt to help push your creativity in the right direction. Okay? It's just a prompt to push you in the right direction. If, if B flat comes out over the E minor chord, work with it. It's not a wrong note. There are no wrong notes in this tune. The wrong notes, the only time you have a wrong note is when you freak out because you feel like you played a wrong note. And see, what happens is the way, when, the way improv works. If you acknowledge it as a wrong note mentally inside your head, it, that acknowledgement manifests itself um, physically in your playing, and it sounds like a wrong note. And here's the ironic part of that, is a lot of times you could be playing quote unquote the right note and because you didn't have that confidence so you thought you were playing a wrong note it actually sounds like a wrong note what does that tell you about jazz improv what does that think about that what does that tell you about jazz improvisation if you could play a wrong if you could play a note let's say for example um you're, you're on the part of the tune that's E minor 7, right? And you play a B. Well, B is as in as you can get. That's as inside as you can get. But you think you're playing a wrong note. It's going to sound like a wrong note. A lot of this is about how you sell your music. Okay? All right. So I hope that helps you guys. Um, I got one more of these to do before I go in. Obviously the sun has gone, gone down already. Um, I hope I'm not keeping people awake. <laughs> so we'll do one more of these and then I'll cut it, shut it down. God bless you.